you got to be the one to take all this stuff to the circuit judge. You think they're going to believe a Negro over a white man? I can't send nobody else. I can't watch nobody else starve us. I've got to do it. I'm sorry. Well, I'm not going to let you go. Marcus needs a father. And that sheriff is just going to gun you down. You know that? That's the chance I got to take. Long story. Much longer than I care to remember. But how come they send you out here to a federal prison to wait for a court martial instead of doing it back there in Vietnam? <laughs> it don't make no sense to me. So listen, fellas, uh, it's been a long ride. How about a smoke with my friend back here? Thanks. Thanks. Okay, Chief. There's a fine here. Stop the car. Stop this damn car. Goddamn car's on fire. Fire. Stop the what? car. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Here tell Judge Riley's supposed to be here this morning. Yeah, I know her. I hear tell that nigger Marcus has been talking about some signed papers and all that. He's supposed to be seeing the judge this morning. Don't mean nothing.
Well, ain't this something? I told you, boy. There'd be some trouble if you come to town this morning. You best get on back home now, you hear? What? So that you can keep on beating on us? Raping our women and killing when you feel like it? No, sir. I've had all I'm going to take. I got proof of all the stuff that's been going on around you. And we're tired of it. You hear? And this morning, I'm going to see that circuit judge and let him know not one Negro citizen is safe in this town as long as you're here. Negro citizen? Yesterday, y'all was niggers. Now, who changed that? Must have been that Martin Luther King boy I've been hearing about. This world is changing, old man. And days for people like you gonna be over real soon. You're under arrest for disrespecting an officer. Now, hand me that paper and come on in here. You're resisting arrest? I'm telling you, buggers, I'm warning you! didn't have to kill him. Hey, you saw it. He was resisting arrest, wasn't he? Now, you good people come on over to jail later on this afternoon and sign the witness papers. Yeah? Not this time. You can't just go on killing Negroes. Times are changing. Yeah, the people around here are changing, too. What the hell do you think this is all about? Oh, you will sign those papers like I told you. I don't even know why the hell I'm here in the first place. I didn't do anything but follow orders. It's like a dumbass. Hey, man. That's exactly what you are. Hey. Hey. Would you like to be back in that federal prison waiting for a court martial? How do you know I can't beat the court martial? Sure your ass, they won't. Then maybe Vietnam was better for you then, Tony. Quiet, quiet. quiet. Listen. Come on, let's go. Get to the circuit judge. I say, let's yeah. get our guns and make us stand right here uh, in the heart man, of town. Man. Black Panthers are right. You meet brutality with brutality. And false with false. That's not the way, Jackson. 
We don't stand a chance. Let's try to reach the FBI, the NAACP, or somebody before we go out there and do something crazy. He's right. You want to send for the FBI? All right. Who wants to go? You, Gus? How about you, Pee Wee? Now, we all know what happened to Marcus. Now, there's the example of a man going to the law, and God damn it, look what happened to him. He ain't gonna listen to us. He's got all the proof to show his innocence. We ain't got nothing. shit now hey, man now is not the time Let's just go out there and see what they want they want what they want is some niggas and the only way to handle this is to talk their language all right you boys keep your guns ready now Hammond this is the sheriff now come on out here boy I want to talk to you What kind of meeting you having in there, boy? Having prayer meeting, Sheriff. Asking the Lord to give us courage, leadership. And what did the Lord say, Ham? Lord didn't say nothing, Sheriff. I'm doing the talking. I'm going to take care of this now. Get on up out there! I think it's time we stop running. Let's go. Good morning, miss. No, we don't mean you any harm. So please don't be scared, okay? That's a nice fishing rod you got there, son. I bet you and your daddy go fishing a lot, huh? I answer all the questions around here, not my son. Where's your man? He'll be home soon. Now, what you want? We don't have no money, and that old car over there don't work. All we need is just a place to stay for a few days, that's all. But you can't stay here. We're only a mile from town. Quentin! Get inside that house, quick. Ah! Ah! Tony, boy, shut the windows. Come here, you. Do you have a gun? No. Don't lie to me. Where's the gun? Talk to me like that. I don't care who you people are. Listen here, I don't have time to play. Where's the gun? Car's getting close, Quentin. Stop.
Bill, uh, I come to pay my respect. You got your nerve. Coming here? After what you done? That was his own fault. What I done was legal. You through, Sheriff? Oh, one more thing. Got a telegram this morning that uh, three escaped nigger prisoners from the Army might be headed this way. Now, if you see anything, you be sure to tell me, you hear? Elizabeth. Elizabeth Coleman. Well, Mrs. Coleman, we'll need a change of clothes and a place to stay. I promise you, we won't make any trouble for you, your husband, or your son. After a day or so, we'll be gone. But what about the law that's after you? I'm sure we lost them. Don't worry. have a woodshed out in the back. You can stay out there, but for only a day or two. Thank you. issued after the incident at Hammond's house. One saying all y'all niggas gonna have to stay in your own places after dark and uh, not go meeting and creating civil disorder around right here. This here only a place for the youngsters to dance and have some fun a bit, Shane. You know ain't no meeting or nothing. That's what I say it is. Now, I'm getting strange feelings about things around right here. Y'all gonna have to close this place down for disobeying the law. This place my bread and butter, Chef. I can't close it down. You do what I tell you, fat man, you hear? Well, now, you can't force me. You ain't got no coat order. That's right. What do you say, boy? I ain't got what? The man asked, where's your court order to close this place down, Chef? What's your name, boy? My name is Mike. What's yours, boy? <laughs> God damn it, get back. Oh, I swear I could. All right. Now, you better have this place closed down tight by midnight, or I'll have more white sheets out in that yard than y'all ever saw in a lifetime. You tell that boy Mike. I'll come looking for him. <laughs> I'm not a 
It's not 1866. And no matter where we are, no one has to take that kind of treatment. Black people I know sure wouldn't. Where you come from, it might be 1966. But we in the South. And down here, this is the way things always been and still are. Well, there's a movement going on. Brothers and sisters are demanding their rights. Who's that should have reached this town by now? We've been here long enough, man. It's time to be moving on. Sooner or later, her little boy's gonna tell somebody about us, and then that'll be that. It's like Quentin's waiting on something. Maybe it's time we split up and go our separate ways. He is still our commanding officer. And we split when he tells us to split and not before. What the fuck is it about Quentin anyway that makes you follow him like a blind dog? Because he's the best damn field officer I ever met. How many times did he save your life and mine? And furthermore, he's black. As far as I'm concerned, an officer is an officer. White, black, yellow, I don't care. He's still somebody ordering me around. Quentin's ass is whiter than any other West Point graduate I've ever seen. Look, man. Tony Butch. Who are they? Get rid of them. What's wrong with you? They're my neighbors and friends. Bad man. Gus, how you doing? Morning, Bill. Oh, uh, this is Quentin, my, my cousin. Gus, fat man. Gus, fat man. Yeah. You're not from around here, are you? Uh, no, I'm, uh, just passing through. Well, what's happening in town? Can we talk? Oh, sure. He know everything. He even got a chance to see the sheriff passing by the other day. Bell, we come by here to get your gun. We're gonna put a stop to this shit before it get too late. Hell, Jackson and Hammond dead. Pauline raped. Uh, we're gonna put a stop to him right now. Well, what about if we all go to the circuit judge? Forget that circuit judge. Your husband got killed going to that circuit judge. There's only one way to solve this problem, and that's to put a bullet in his head, and that'll stop him cold. That's right. <laughs> well, how are you going to do that? Well, we, we don't know yet, but we'll, we'll figure it out. Maybe this isn't any of my business. Maybe I shouldn't ask. But if you are successful with the assassination, what happens then? What's your next move? Well, whatever happens next is better than what's happening right now. Well, if that's the approach you're going to take, chances are you're going to fail. Well, you sure know a lot of fancy words, mister. How you gonna come in here and tell us about our town? It ain't your town that it never will be until you take it over by force. Now, if you really are what you say you are, then maybe you could stay here and help us protect ourselves. Or show us how to do it. Maybe I could. But this isn't my fight. Staying here would be too dangerous for me and you. I've got a fight to settle with the army. That's enough. My husband was just like these two, wanting to do something. Just not knowing how to do it. That's why he's dead. Bill, I'm sorry about your husband. My answer is still no. Think about it. I've read books about men like you, but those books always told me who they were. Who 
are you, Quinn? And why the law chasing after you? You really want to know about me? One night, we ended up in a village called Ben Ket, which was my platoon leader. Tony was my acting platoon sergeant. Now, we were on a special operation that no one was supposed to hear about. We moved in, shooting, killing, and burning. And then it happened. Butch had found all the women and children, brought them over to me. I called headquarters. I was given the order to kill them. I was in command, and I decided not to follow through with those orders. So I was immediately relieved of my position. Which was in charge, and he refused. That left Tony. And he refused to answer the radio. Five minutes later, our own jets came in. Came in very close. They started dropping napalm. And not only on the villagers, but on most of my own men. I tried raising hell, but it was like butting my head against the wall. Nobody listened. They didn't know how to hush me up. So I ended up back in the States, awaiting some closed door court martial, some federal prison out here. No way. There's no way I'm staying here. You said we were getting out tonight. And now you want to drag me into this civil rights bullshit. I followed your ass to hell and now. But this, you just count me out. You know, if you just shut up and listen, I got an idea that'll work for all of us. And save our asses at the same time. How's that? The Army doesn't want us to have our say about what happened in Nam, right? Right. Now, if we could bring national attention to Riverbend, that means reporters, television, federal investigators. We will be big news, and we will be able to bring our story to the press first. Now, I know the Army doesn't want that. And I don't think that any court-martial in this land would want to convict us after that. How are we going to get national attention? What do we have to do? We are going to recruit all the young, capable blacks that we can find, train them into fighters, what we know and then take over the town. You probably expect me to be your goddamn drill sergeant, I guess. I'm supposed to take a bunch of country, backwards niggers, and turn them into soldiers in what? A couple of weeks? So you can put another medal to your chest? No way. I'm out of here, man. Tony. Now, you can do anything that you want. But you're going to listen to me one more time. Now, we have been 10,000 miles away from home, helping other people preserve their freedom. People we don't even know, an enemy we don't even hate. And what were we doing? Killing, burning, and destroying. Now, have we done any good? No. Exactly. Now we're back here in the world, and we have an opportunity to help our own people, a people that we should care about. So now you want to run out before the battle? I've had enough of your lectures and now. Now, if I want to help my people, I've got plenty of them back in Chicago. I don't need to deal with this southern shit. I'm through being a Boy Scout. 
done my share. From now on, it's me I'm looking out for. I'll stick around for now, because your plan just might work out. But if it doesn't, then I'm gone. I've met a man I think I can be happy with. Now, I know it ain't been long since you've been gone. Them in another way. I can't explain it. I just know I love him. It's a miracle. No, sir. This is no miracle. The time has come for us to do something for ourselves. Now, fat man and me been talking with y'all the last few days, and y'all know about the man in town that's gonna help us. Now, I want you to listen to what I have to say, because I'm only gonna say it once. our last day of preparing. Exactly 20 days from the day. Sheriff. What can we do for you in the house of the Lord? I ain't never seen so many niggas in church before. Is this some kind of special Sunday meeting or is this a gathering? Every Sunday is special to us, Chef. And in the eyes of the Lord, we are not niggas. Reverend? You better tell that boy he's doing some powerful talking. Now, I don't know what's going on here, but I'm gonna find out. Daddy told me one day that as long as a nigger lived in River Bend, he'd always be a nigger. And when he died, he'd be a good nigger. Now, Gus, you know, I don't call a boy by his name unless I get the feeling he's about to become a real good nigger. My name is Samuel Quinton, and I am a major. This is Butch Turner, a lieutenant, and Tony Marks, a sergeant. We three men are combat veterans of Vietnam. And when this period of your life is over, you men will be combat veterans of Riverbend. 
because you have a problem in this town. And we're here to help you solve that problem. Now, none of you men have ever killed before. But you may have to. And you may have to die. But if that's the price for freedom, then that's the price that you, I, all of us are going to have to pay. We will set up a camp and training site here in these woods. And we will eat and sleep here until we are all ready to make our move. And one more thing. I don't ever, ever want to hear the words boy, nigger, or colored used again. We are all black men, and we should be proud of that fact. Understood? Yes, yeah. sir. Understood? Yes, sir. Now, every man that I point to will identify himself loud and clear and tell me, in short, about his background and his skills. You. My name Alvin Stone. I'm 32, married with two children. My daddy and me was born in Riverbend, and we've been sharecroppers all our lives, just like everybody else around here. Yeah. All us heard about you and your friends, and we want to thank you for helping us. And we real proud, sir, to be under your command. Thank you, Alvin Stone. And I guarantee you men that whenever you finish your training, you'll be even prouder and walking tall. do this, tear off my sleeves. I was going into a different kind of battle this time. <laughs> move! Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Come on, sir. Let's move! Let's get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! You want your freedom? Let's go! You want to get up? Let's move! Let's move! Let's move! Let's move. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Put water now. Where's the way to get over these things? Thank you. Take the cornbread, Daryl. Take it back to us. That's better than chicken, I'll tell you that. Did you declare to you? Made it out here. you all. Judge Riley's been hearing things and he wants to know what's going on around here. Mr. Mayor, boys. Um, y'all know why we're here, so let's hear what the sheriff has to say. Now this might sound dumb to all you real smart folks, but I'm telling you, I got a feeling that the niggas are planning some violence around here. All the young bucks are nowhere to be found. Everybody else is acting strange. I went to the church when they were having a meeting, and every nigger in town was there, even the winos. Well, what's wrong with everybody being in church at the same time? Negroes have a God, too. Jake, I don't think you understand that times are changing around here. Oh, I understand. 
I can feel it right here in this room. Now, I'm telling you that the niggas are up to something. I don't think we have a problem, Jake. Uncle Willie, my house boy, has been acting just fine. Still grinning and dancing around. <laughs> we do have a problem, Mr. Mayor. The problem is our sheriff has outlived his time. Now, you be real careful over there, Mr. Cook, about what you say. I'm saying I'm going into Atlanta. And I'm going to see if I can't bring charges against you and that stupid deputy of yours. Now, you always been a nigger lover, Cook. But I guess nobody ever gonna change that. But when them black faces look at your woman with them funny eyes and talk back and all, I want everybody to remember what I've been saying here today. For Christ's sake, Jake, you sound like we're about to have a revolution. <laughs> Damn it, I'm telling you. You're gonna have to listen to me. I'm talking about my, our way of life. After this training, you men will be as proud as eagles. Eagles, eagles, eagles. Huh. Huh. Hey. Okay, Tony, you now. Huh. Hey. Huh. 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 And one, two, three. All right, you men try it now. Always watch his eyes. It's kind of like an old Indian passage. When they put on their war paint to go into battle. It's the same thing for me. Here. Then on the other side. Okay. It's simple enough. Simple enough for everybody to understand. <laughs> <laughs> And the wife kept putting it off and off and off. Let's go, let's go. Come on, come on. Okay, yeah, yeah. You're doing fine. Keep it up. Fire! Take it easy with a gun, honey. Now, just calm down. I ain't gonna bother you none. Just come talk to you and Pauline a little bit. I uh, know she's been staying here. Oh, to kill you right now for what you've done to Pauline. Kill it. Kill it! Hush up, Pauline. I can handle this. Don't you be afraid. Bill. Now, I know you know everything's going on in this neck of the woods. So you better tell me where all the young bucks are around here. If you don't get out of here, I'm going to do this down a favor. Unload both barrels, so help me God. Kill him, Bill. You kill him now! Don't you worry none, Pauline. He ain't going to bother us much longer. Let me tell you something. I know something's going on here. I'll be back. We've got a few minutes left, so listen up. Everybody knows what to do. Remember, kill no one unless it is absolutely necessary in self-defense. We are to maintain order. So that means no looting, no revenge. If any one of you gets out of line, I'll deal with him personally. Any questions? What about the chef? I'll take care of him. 
No one is to touch the sheriff. We'll make sure he'll stand trial for everything that he's done. Now the training is over. Tonight is for real. So the next time we meet, the town will be ours. Butch, Tony, carry on. Hugo? Yeah, it's, it's me, Hugo. Sound okay? Yeah, everything's fine. Put the gun, Larry. Door, man. What is this? Come on, let's move. Into the street. Who Come on. Man? Get going. Hey, man. Let's drop now. Right. We gotta get you somewhere you come from.
Yeah, the mayor. What the hell is going on around here? Who's responsible for this? I am. Who the hell are you? All you need to know, Mayor, is that this is a civil uprising and you're under arrest. Listen to me. I don't know what you want, but you'll never get away with this. Never. You in big trouble, boy. All right, but you got no respect for the mayor. Shut up. You got no respect for the party. Shut up. Hey, boy, I want to talk to you. Answer me. This is my answer. Stone, I'm going to the church. Come on, move on. Come on, come on. They will turn this, I can tell you that. Jacob. Jacob, what's going on here? What's the meaning of all this? What are you doing talking to that nigga? He's my friend. Jacob, you listen. This is not the way. I was going to Atlanta to try to do something about these problems. Now you folks got a whole lot bigger problem. I'm awful sorry about that, Mr. Cook, but this has been a problem too long, and it's time for us to do something about it. That's why we're to protect ourselves and our families. You're a good man, Mr. Cook, but you wait. And right now, that's your problem. Now just move on inside the church. Everybody calm down. Calm down. Riverbend is no longer going to be the breeding ground of black injustice, discrimination, and persecution. You people are now our hostages. And it is in this church that you will remain until somebody comes down here to talk to us and to meet our demands. And this is all over. The guilty will be brought to justice. And the innocent will hopefully have a better understanding of your neighbors from the other side of the tracks. What's up? I made contact with the governor's office. I gave them the message, and they just laughed and hung up the phone. It's OK, Alvin, as long as they got the message. Butch, they're coming. Positions now, move! Check this out. Fire! What the hell was that? You see anybody? No, but there were bullets flying everywhere. That was enough for me. John, give me your binoculars. I'll be damned. Niggers on the defense. Just like infantry soldiers. Get on the radio to headquarters. Tell them to send reinforcements and heavy weapons. What's up? 
those cowboy little fools came barreling down the road and ran upon us. We just turned them around, that's all. Any of them get shot? No, I don't think so. Okay, good work. Keep me posted. I'll be stationed over at the jail. You got it. We really don't know what the uh, situation in the town is. We can't get close enough to find out. What do you mean you can't get close enough? How many guns do they have? You know where the white folks are? We're trying to determine that now. The streets are clear, but there's armed guards walking around. You listen here, Captain. We ain't gonna let a handful of niggers ruin our peacekeeping reputation. You take that town, you hear? You take it. Just like that. Take the town. What are we gonna do now? Give me that bow horn. This is Captain Monroe with the Georgia State Patrol. Now, we don't want no bloodshed. But There's already been bloodshed. Black people's bloodshed, and nobody stopped that. Not even the mighty state patrol. I'm only going to tell you this one time. We have enough firepower up here to blow everybody out of them holes down there. Now, you think about that. You try that, mister, and you'll hear one boom. And 300 of your people are going flying through this town like rag dogs. Now, in one hour, our commander will meet with yours halfway between the roadblock and where I am located. Then you will know our demand. Now, as far as we're concerned, if you are not back behind that roadblock within two minutes, we're going to drop your ass right where you stand. Never thought I'd see the day when one of your kind wearing my gun. Well, look closely, because today's the day. I'm gonna see to it you never wear that gun again. One thing you can be sure of, Jake, you are gonna die. Did our man show you? Yeah, he's still waiting. No kidding. <laughs> All right. If anything goes wrong, drop him. Don't worry about me. Got it? Got it, boss. Their commander? Well, I guess. Better tell me what's going on here. You had better tell me right now. Who the hell are you anyway? My name is Major Samuel Quinton, and I'm commander of the forces that now occupy Riverbend. As of last night, every white resident of this town was taken hostage. Now, if you attempt anything foolish, they will die. And we're all ready to die along with them. Do you understand that? You get your demands. What do you want? We want the governor and members of the press down here. We want them to see and make public all the atrocities that have been allowed in this town for too long. We want a full-scale federal investigation into all rapes, killings, brutality charges. Do you have any idea what we're going to do to you for this? Captain, if that governor does not arrive here in 24 hours, you had better bring all the long black Cadillacs you can find because you're going to need them. Now it's your move. Good day. find out where those families are, you get back to me on the radio immediately. You reckon the governor's gonna give them all the demands they're asking for? That depends on how successful you are tonight. 
Good luck, Lieutenant. Move away. You remember when that bull chased us out of old man Gilmore's apple orchard? You remember? Yeah, with your slow ass. <laughs> My slow ass, man, you was the one in snow trying to take that damn apple. You hear that? I heard it, man. What do you think it is? I don't know. It's somebody out there. I know it. Oh. I just can't see him. Tell me one thing. Did we get him? Yeah, man. We got him. We got him real good. Oh, God, man. What am I going to do? Can you see anything? No, nothing yet. Spoken with my east line though, and it seems to be an attempt to penetrate the line. Any casualties? Quitting, we've lost one man. Who? It's Mike Quinn. Oh no. Damn, Mike. I'm on my way down. Yeah, affirmative. They don't take us seriously, Quentin. They think we playing games. We gotta kill one of those whiteys so they can see we mean business. Tony! Just take the truck and check that no one else is infiltrated. If we kill one of them, then they'll have more respect for us. You know, just like a nam man. That's not the deal here! Just do as I say. Report to me if there's any more problems. All right. Get the damn ambulance, Nelson. Get it. Okay. What happened back here? We got caught in a crossfire, Captain. The only reason we made it back here is because they quit firing. That's the only reason. They got an army out there, Captain. We dug in. We got us a, a problem, Captain. A real problem. Uh, no sound. Quentin and his men are the ones who got the problem, one like they ain't never seen before. Where's Quentin? He's still out there checking the line. Let me have the sheriff and the mayor. I'm gonna teach them all a lesson. Let me talk to Quentin first. No. He gone soft. With him, you never get your revenge. I'll show you the way we did it in the now. Yeah. Give me the keys.
All right. Take them out. Y'all know Mike got killed by the police. Yeah. Now we gonna teach the state police a lesson in guerrilla warfare. An eye for an eye. Give them the knife. <laughs> you crazy if you think we're gonna fight each other. You crazy as hell. You will, Mayor. Or your family will die one by one right here in front of you. Yeah. Hope you will fight. Get the knife. Get the knife. Get the knife. What are we going through, Jay? Pick up the knife. Pick up the knife, man. Pick up the knife, man. Kill him, man. Get him, man. Cut him. You're not going to do this, are you? Cut him from head to toe. Pick up the knife, man. Cut him, man. Pick up the knife, man. He don't care about you, man. No, Jack, don't let him make us do this. We're white men, not animals, for God's sake, man. Get him, 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 man. What is it, Bill? You gotta come. Tony's got the mayor and the sheriff killing each other in the square. Go <laughs> on! Look, what I did was necessary. You the one who said this is a war and we're not playing no games. What did you expect? I expected you to act like a soldier. Not like a damn street punk! I'm sick of your fucking attitude. I've had it with you and this goddamn town. Damn you, Tony! What the hell are you doing? Quentin! Take it easy. Don't turn your back on me like that. Enough. I said enough. You think you bad? This has been a long time coming. Enough, Tony. Enough. Take him back.
I said it is hotter than hell here. We need more water. One moment. Captain Monroe? Hey, come here. There's the quarters out here. Nelson. What the hell's going on? How'd they find out about this? You had better stop them. If word gets out to the governor about this, he'll go crazy. Stop them. Yeah, he's coming up here. <laughs> he's gonna crazy. What's going on? Y'all got a permit to film you? You don't need a permit to film on public access roads. Well, from now on, you do. Now, all of you, get the hell out of here. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> Lieutenant. We're not leaving here until we find out what the hell's going on. Butch to Quentin, over. Quentin, Butch is calling you. I'm here, Butch. Yo, boss. Looks like it's gonna work. Your first TV crew is here, and it don't look like they're gonna turn back. That's good news, man. Give me posted. You bet. What's up? More reporters have come. Look, man, I am really sorry about what Tony did last night. Yeah. Tony's a problem. It's not just him. It's starting to get bigger, man. What? This ain't the mom, Eddie. It's a civilian matter. We already got two men killed. So what are you trying to say, Major? This was my idea. It was my planning. It was my responsibility. So you're wondering whether or not you're doing the right thing. Yeah. Sam, listen to me. You recall that time you came to see me at that field hospital in Tanam? Right after I'd got caught in that ambush and that lost 12 of my men? Remember what you said to me then? Yeah, I do. Well, it's the same thing here. This is still war. A different kind. But it's still war. Yep. And let Tony go. Hell, he never understood any of this. Quitting the man just wasn't cut out for all of this. Now, when we get word from you that you have located the hostages and eliminated the guard, then we're going to roll over that front line just like Sherman marched to the sea. Problem. Let's get it on. Good evening, ladies. Hi. Hey. Thank you. You know, when I arrived here, my only obsession was to fight the army on the Vietnam issue. Now, Bill, I just want my day in court, no matter what the outcome, because I want to be with you, because I love you. Oh, I'm scared, Quentin. Do you really think a black man will get any justice from all this? Sweetheart, I do know that running's not the answer for me. Never has been. Whatever happens, I can wait. I got all my life.
Now listen up. The swamp at this point is deepest and widest. According to surveillance, it's not guarded on the other side, so if we keep quiet, we can make it. Once you reach town, we proceed as practiced. Swift, punctual. Remember, no war games, no prisoners. You shoot to kill. Let's go. Move or get in my way. I got something to do and ain't nobody gonna stop me. Now just take it easy with that gun, Pauline. Stone, I swear I'll shoot you if you get in my way. Tyrone, get bail quick. Don't you move, Tyrone. Where's Jake? My brother was killed last night, Jake. All because of you. Just another dead nigga, that's all. I'm going to end your miserable life right now. You niggas disgust me. Well, come on, shoot me. Kill me, goddammit! This one's for my brother. Oh, sweet Jesus. So help me God. If you try to stop me, I'll shoot you both. Polly, please. Don't kill him. Don't even give him the pleasure of dying. If you kill him, you'll be no better than anybody else around here. All we done in this town is gonna be for nothing. You feel it too, Belle? I know you do. I heard you crying many nights after he killed Marcus. Look at me. I feel dirty and worthless. Who's gonna want me now? I have nothing. You got family, Pauline. We love you, baby. It may not be blood, but we family. Don't be like him. Baby girl, don't be like him. You stupid nigga, bitch. You can't even kill a white man, right? And, Belle, I should have spread your black legs the other night while I had the chance. That way you wouldn't need this big lip coon with you. You're pushing it, Jake. You really it's pushing enough. it. It's enough. I've had it up to here with you. You haven't learned anything from all this at all, have you? Okay. Let's go outside. Just you and me right now. Oh, I'm used to whooping up on niggas like you. Let's go.
Take him back. Where's the banker? You mean old man McBride? Yeah, if he's the banker. I'll wake him. McBride. Hey, wake up. Hmm? Wake up. What? Where are you taking me? Please, don't kill me. Oh, my God. 
Monroe, this is Parker. Can you hear me? Parker, have you located the people? Parker, I can't hear you. Have you freed the people? I've located and freed the hostages. They're in the big church. They're all safe. You can move in now. Parker, I can't hear you. Major Clinton. Mm -hmm. Weapon. God damn it, I can't hear myself. Get those people back. Parker, come in. Monroe, this is Quentin. That was stupid. Very, very stupid. Because now we have even more casualties. And the remainder of your hit squad are now our prisoners. Now, if you want to see these men alive, you better make a decision. You better make it right now. What decision? I want you to bring the press and the TV into Main Street after sunrise. Both the white and black citizens will be there to meet them. But remember, reporters only. My men will lay down their weapons also. Now, the sheriff is still my prisoner until the governor and some federal agents come down here. Now, if you agree to this, we've got a deal. No deal. I'm coming in. Don't do it, Monroe. All my men are captured and Quentin still controls the church. This is your move, Monroe. Quentin. That's it, you gotta do. I know that. No, it's your word I'm counting on, Captain. Don't double-cross me. Because if you do, I'll fight you to the end. After sunrise, the bridge will be open. No one will be hurt, but only if you follow my orders. Captain, how do we know that every black in this town won't be shot down? Because I've just given my word. Like it used to be. No, it ain't. You go. Because, right, times are changing. People like me are going to be left behind. You're, you're talking crazy, Jake. When the state police come into town, they're going to take us away. Riverbend will be changed forever. And my way of life is never going to be the same again. Oh, but I don't give a damn. Because I know one thing, it'll never change. What's that, Jake? Just like my daddy used to say, a nigger ain't never gonna be nothing but a nigger. Oh, Jake. Jake.
so far apart Can we really work it out? I don't want to leave another day Behind a wall of doubt Oh, and I'd do anything To make you understand I've got feelings just like you Why can't you take me as I am? Love brings us together Love takes away Today